Okay, I'm with Professor Mark Knoll of GeoQuest Associates, who is an archaeomagnetic data, amongst his many other skills. We're at Girton Quarry, looking at some kiln-like features, and uh, Mark has come to attempt to find some archaeomagnetic, archaeomagnetic dates for them. So, Mark, what are you doing? Uh, I'm taking some samples from this burnt feature here, David. Uh, as you know, it's a directional uh, dating method. We are, we're going to recover the direction of magnetisation in the burnt floor of this kiln. Uh, and in order to do that, I need to remove some samples from the kiln uh, with a knowledge of the orientation that the samples had in the structure. Uh, and the method that we use, it's called the, the button method, a miniaturised method. It's, it's, it's destructive, but minimally destructive. And what we're going to do is to uh, glue on uh, a plastic button onto an area which we've identified as being burnt and in situ. We glue the plastic button on using a fast setting epoxy. And while the button is being positioned, uh, we level the surface using a bullseye spirit level. And I've done that for the eight or so samples that you can see here. Every one has had a, a spirit level placed on it to make sure that the surface is level while the glue, which you can see underneath, is, is setting. And that was done about ten minutes ago. The glue has now gone off and we've got our uh, set of buttons there ready to remove the samples. But before I do that, I need to add one other directional reference. We know that these surfaces are horizontal, but I now need to record a bearing. And this could either be uh, the direction of magnetic north, it could be a bearing towards a church spire like the one over there, or in this case I'm going to mark on the direction of the sun. Uh, and I do that quite simply using this uh, sun compass. Yes, it's just a piece of plastic, but it's been accurately machined. It's uh, very nicely at right angles at the end. I place the uh, I place the perspex bar on the top of the, uh, the button and you can see that behind the bar there's the shadow of the bar and there's also a reflection of the sun. So what, I'm, what I do is I make sure that the reflection uh, disappears into the shadow and I then know that the side of the bar is point pointing directly towards the sun. If you watch, I'll turn, there's the reflection, I mark on uh, a line and an arrow towards the sun, and then record the time. Uh, it's 13.06 GMT, 13.06. And that's the direction I can work out uh, using a computer program, taking into account the latitude and the longitude and the time. I now know the direction of that arrow. When I've done that for all of the samples, I'll remove uh, the buttons, cut them away, and I'll find a a piece of kiln about that size stuck onto the bottom of the button. It then goes into the laboratory where I dry and consolidate the material and each sample goes into a magnetometer that measures the direction of magnetism in the burnt clay relative to the arrow, which is pointing towards the sun as you remember, relative to the arrow and relative to this surface. And the computer attached to the magnetometer then gives me uh, the declination, that's the horizontal bearing of the magnetization, and the inclination, the dip of the magnetization. And it's those two angles which we compare to the UK reference curve to obtain, hopefully, an Iron Age date. Lovely, thank you very much. And the location of the samples uh, is slightly random in there, but chosen by just the um, the areas that you think were are likely to give the the best. Yes, we had a day. we had a, a, a bit of a conference about um, first of all what these structures actually were, and then we looked and tried to find areas which were in situ and fired, and uh, with a little bit of careful cleaning, uh, I found the areas which were very hard and in in, in situ, uh, and those are the samples which I've, I've decided to take. There, there is a minimum number. Uh, statistically, we wouldn't like to take less than six. Uh, the idea of taking six, seven, eight, or perhaps as many as twenty is that the average magnetization then averages out any uh, inhomogeneity or, or disturbance in the structure. It's possible if I take a, do a dozen samples that one or two may need to be rejected. Uh, maybe they've moved and I can't actually see the movement. It could be that some of the samples aren't magnetized at all because they were too cool, they haven't been heated. Another possibility is that there's rootlet disturbance, which is also randomised magnetisation. I should say that uh, in order for the magnetisation to be reset uh, to the Iron Age direction, uh, the clay has got to be heated and then cooled uh, to a temperature of about 600 centigrade. That's the critical temperature.
temperature um, above which the material becomes non-magnetic and then when it cools down through this critical temperature, about 600, it acquires magnetization in the Iron Age direction in this case. And that magnetization is then stable um, for millions of years, provided the temperature remains uh, below that 600 centigrade. And hopefully if they are pottery kilns, then we should have achieved that 600 centigrade. Yes, I mean, so, yeah. to make the pottery, the temperature's got to be near 1,000. Uh, so there's every chance of that. But a lot of people think that uh, archaeomagnetic dating can only be applied to fired clay and can only be applied to pottery kilns. In fact, any geological material uh, contains sufficient magnetic minerals to be used for magnetic dating. So we could have a, a, a kiln with a floor made of uh, stone flags, uh, it could be made of uh, limestone blocks, and even though the limestone is almost pure calcium carbonate, there's sufficient contamination of iron oxides to give us a magnetization. That's great, thank you very much. And all being well, uh, if these work happily, we should ideally get a date within about a 50-year envelope. Is that is that right? Well, the, as as best, an ideal. In, in the Iron Age, at best, uh, we could hope for perhaps a 50-year margin. Um, but you should also bear in mind that the, the margin might be infinite. It might not be possible to date the structure of at course. all for reasons which I, I've given, that the, it's not been heated sufficiently or there's been too much disturbance. Okay. Professor Mark Noll, thank you very much. My pleasure.